Okay, uh, please go to class model week 13. I have new uploads. For one is max flow. And the other one is goal programming. So there's a Word document and Excel files for both. I give you a couple of minutes to log into your model and download these four files. Goal programming, two files, max flow, two files. Hi, Professor. Um, I want to ask a question regarding um, homework nine. Since you mentioned that uh, we need to submit both Lingo and Excel file for uh, homework nine uh, on Monday. So, but uh, in the file, you didn't, you didn't mention that. So do we still need to submit both file? Yeah, uh, thanks for your uh, reminder. Let me edit it if I haven't uh, mentioned in the file. Yes, please do both. Okay, regarding your homework, that's an important thing. So I expect you to help each other and it's not cheating. It's a just large uh, group-based uh, uh, assignment. Uh, therefore, you are more than welcome to help each other through grouping, help each other, and that's totally fine. I, my goal was you to see the previous year exam, help each other, understand it, so you can easily hack the final exam. So for you, the, uh, and I, I really want you guys to get a really good grade in this course, because on top of, you're really good students, usually I have many of you in the office hours, that's really good. And on top of that, I really happy with your assignments. So, I mean, the only, uh, uh, milestone is your final exam so hopefully it will be easy for you guys use nine okay let's use excel and bingo for this repetitive problem i shouldn't say please because it's your uh your friend might think is optional so uh, Mr. uh professor we could use either or, right? Because Lingo doesn't work on my Mac. Oh. Okay. Uh, I, let me work with my Mac today. If you couldn't, don't submit Lingo. So there is no way. If it's if it's not possible, it's not possible. Yeah. You shouldn't. Yeah. You shouldn't uh, lose credits. But I, the work. I just could fix my Mac yesterday. So. Let me play with my Mac today. If I could resolve the issue, I send you a video and explain how to do in the Mac. But 
if it's not possible, so you shouldn't lose any credit for the thing that is not your fault. Thank you, Professor. So, and Professor, I want to confirm that. So for homework nine, we need to like submit uh, four, at least four files, like uh, my Tableau and Excel and Lingo and probably Word file. Uh, I'm I'm not uh, picking on uh, if you use Tableau or not. My point is you, because it's, you know, for, uh, it's your last assignment and I want your focus would be on the prescriptive, but if you are more than welcome to use Tableau or Pythons. So those are optional, yeah. but I expect you for prescriptive, do both if it's possible. So for some of you has Mac, we are not sure. So I've uh, played with my Mac today. If I couldn't do that, I don't expect you guys to use it in Mac, which is really weird. It's first time I see it doesn't work in Mac. Okay. But so homework night, the patch two you mentioned to upload my and Tableau files. There, there are like two questions in the homework night, mm -hmm. I guess. So yeah. for second question, we need to upload nine and Tableau, right? Nine is enough, but if you you can work with Tableau too. So last exam, just for last assignment, just for you practicing the final exam. And I haven't seen any assignment in Lingo or uh, from Lingo from you guys now. It's the reason I'm focusing on it. But uh, give give me today afternoon. I can let me sure if there is a way to work in Lingo in Lingo in the Mac. Then I update your assignment. But at least it starts. Uh, trying to solve the problems. And I think you have about one week. Less than okay, one. thank you. Thank you. I mean, the goal is not torturing you. The goal is like you exposing to the last year uh, final exam. So your this year final exam should be super easy for you. Okay, so let's focus on the a new type of problem. We call it goal programming. So in the goal programming, usually you have, you have multiple objects. You try to reach a goal, but sometimes it's, it's impossible due to some policies. Let's see how it, uh, what kind of problem is it? Again, uh, as I said, for prescriptive analytics, the, the, the only way that you, can, you learn this uh, topic is just through uh, different exposure to different type of problems. So it's kind of weird that like you, you learn this topic by problems. It's kind of different from uh, traditional business topics that you had so far. Okay, Davis McKeown wants to expand the convention center at his hotel in Martel Beach, uh, South Carolina. The types of conference rooms being considered are small, medium, large, which has different layout, uh, which is like 400 feet, 750 and 1050 feet, and different co uh, cost labels like 18,000, 33,000 and almost 45,000. Davis would like, you know, it's would like, it's not must. So when we said would like, let me just show it. Okay, when we said would like, it just means uh, we are targeting approximation. We try to reach the goal, but if you reach that, Great, if we couldn't, we couldn't. So Davis would like to add five small, 10 medium and 15 large conference rooms. He also wants the total expansion to be 25,000 square feet and to limit the cost to $1 million. So these are my constraints. So in terms of area, uh, 25K square feet, and in terms of cost, $1 million. Okay. I give you like a couple of minutes. So let's say you, you can reach that goal, five small, 10 medium and 15 large room. Just use cell phone calculator at least and tell me if he exactly get that uh, amount of rooms, what would be the uh, uh, finite, uh, I mean, in, uh, what is what would be the cost and area? So just please calculate it. I just type it here, something. So area equal. OK. 
Okay, okay. So you asked me a question, but he, your friend just fixed that question. So 1050 times 15. Cost. Okay, Josh just calculated the area. So if he, if Davis uh, reached his goal in terms of having five small room, 10 medium, five, 15 large room, the, the area would be two, two, five, two, five, zero. So 25,000 is more than our limit. So is there anyone who calculated the cost? Thank you, Josh. Let's see if I calculate it. Okay, Kathy and Josh both calculated correctly. So the total cost would be more than $1 million. Right. So look, if Davis uh, reach his goal, what he would like, uh, both in terms of both area and cost, we uh, we cannot follow our constraint. We we would it costs more, and also the area is more than what uh, he can uh, provide. So it seems he cannot reach his goal, but. Since he would like to reach that goal, maybe it's better to minimize deviation from the goal. So maybe, um, first of all, I mean, in terms of number of rooms, we cannot have 5.2 rooms, medium rooms, or like 15.1 large rooms. So everything should be integer. But at the end, maybe if you get f five small rooms, nine medium, or maybe 14 large rooms, as you see, the deviation is kind of uh, is not that bad. So uh, you, re you reach near to five, ten, and fifteen type, uh, and rooms types that we have. So in goal programming, we try to uh, minimize our deviation from our goal. So um, let's see how we can do so. As you see, since we are talking about deviations, so we need to have more variables to consider deviation. So how much, uh, let's say if I make six, if Davis makes six small rooms, the, uh, he had one room as an overbuilt. He, he, uh, the overbuilt variable would be one. If he makes uh, nine median rooms, the uh, underbuild of medium, medium rooms is one. Or he, if he makes 13 large rooms, he, his deviation is two rooms. So two rooms as an underbuild. So as you see, regarding our decision variables, we have we could have more, some uh, underbuild or overbuild. If he, he, if he exactly makes, let's say, 10 medium rooms, in the medium rooms, uh, the overbuilt is zero and underbuilt is zero too. So his deviation both underbuilt and uh, overbuilt would be zero, which is he, it could be his uh, goal. So the initial decision value is just number of rooms, but uh, we have some deviation. So we already saw we cannot exactly make five, ten, and fifteen. It's possible that you have a 
some overbuilt and underbuilt. So T minus S, S stands for small rooms. It just means um, you you might have some uh, you might have some deviation from five, which is uh, indicates that you built less than five. And if you have D plus S, just refers to number of rooms that you built more than five. It's better to both have be zero, right? So uh, it gets uh, exactly five. And same for area, you might have over area or over a square feet or under a square feet. Uh, also in terms of cost, you might have over cost and under cost. So for each uh, variable, decision variable and for each constraints, now we have extra two variables, just saying that uh, I have, just indicating that I made uh, pass my constraints uh, or just not uh, matching my initial goals or here Davis goals. Um, okay, so let's say Davis made seven small rooms. Can anyone tell me what would be D minus S and D plus S? So in case, let's say S is seven. What would be uh, my D minus and D plus? No one, I think it's an easy guess, so. Minus two. Okay, so D my, uh, first of all, uh, I don't have any D minus S, right? I already made overbuilt. Uh, sorry, sorry. So I made overbuilt, so I don't have any underbuilt. So D minus S would be seven, sorry, two. D plus S would be zero. You might confuse with the D minus and D plus. Uh, that's totally okay. So in your mind, you might change the definition. So maybe you can say maybe uh, instead of D minus S min uh, minus D plus S, maybe you can put D plus S minus D minus S, that's totally fine. I mean, the, here the goal is we should have two variables uh, uh, just taking care of deviation, either more than our goal or less than our goal. Professor, can you, sorry, can you repeat that? So D minus S, is, did you say that that's two and D plus S is zero? Yes, but you can define oppositely too. It, the, the point is we should have two variables. One okay. considering the, uh, how much you need to have as an overbit and how much you should have as an underbit. But I, uh, as I said, here my definition might be a little confusing, but you just need to add two variables. So instead of D minus S, D plus S, maybe we can just put, a and B, A minus B. Okay, so it's so, more just important that you have them, yeah. not which one is which. Okay, thank you. So one just uh, taking the uh, plus deviation, and the one just taking care of minus devi uh, deviations. Okay. Okay, so. So here, our goal is not maximum. Let me go back here. So our goal is not uh, maximizing or uh, minimizing the cost. Our goal here is different. We want to eliminate the deviation. Therefore, look at my new objective function style. I just said summation of all the deviation to be zero. So we want to minimize deviations, either overbuilt or underbuilt. 
We prefer to be zero because we want to ex uh, have a more close to our initial goal. But so as, as you see here, which your friends already calculated, um, it may not, you may not reach uh, your goal if you just keep uh, current goal. I mean, so your division may not be zero if you keep current goal. Anyway, so here our goal is minimization but not minimization of cost or distance or time, just minimizing the uh, deviation, either plus or minus ones. So considering the deviations, um, if you look at here, some of them are area, some are uh, some is numbers, like number of rooms, some are uh, area and some are cost. So you cannot sum up something that has different dimensions. So it doesn't make sense five, I want to minimize five, some rooms plus some cost plus uh, like some areas is meaningless. So when you want to sum up something together, maybe it's like, okay, let's say, um, let me try. Maybe you can say, I want to, I have $100 and somebody give me $200. So my money would be $300. Uh, but if you cannot say, I have two male friends plus $200 plus like, uh, like one uh, house. I mean, it could be poetic in some way, but you know, their dimensions are different. So anyway, for, th therefore, we need to have a, dimension, a dimensionless objective function. So for this purpose, for any type of deviation, we just divide them by their, uh, goal. So we have, I, I sorry, it might be too mathematic for you, but the goal is there's a dimension in the numerator and denominator. If you divide them uh, by each other, uh, you, you just cancel the dimensions. And now all of the components of my objective function has same dimension. which just means a uh, proportion of deviation from goal. So let's say my, uh, in terms of small rooms, uh, I made like, sorry, let's say I'm just talking about cost and um, number of small rooms. If I make seven small rooms divided by five, my goal, would be uh, 1.40. So here, my deviation is 0.14. Let's say instead of $1 million in the cost constraint, I'm, I, it costs 1,400 for me. So my initial goal was, was $1 million. So therefore, the proportion of, the, if you divide them by each other, the proportion is 1.40. So in both of them, you have 0.40 deviation from initial goal or 40% differences. So percentage doesn't have any dimension. Therefore, when you divide them by the deviations by uh, the initial goal, instead of looking at diff uh, different units, you have a proportion of differences or percentage of differences. So basically here, so by the way, this one, if I consider my objective function here, the proportion is just, 
or 40% deviation here still 0.40 or 40% deviation. So I'm minimizing the percentage of deviation from the goal. So is there any question why I divided by, why I divided deviation by a goal? If any any uh, if, if there is any question any uh, any place please let me know you can just ask your question and stop me and so I can explain more but anyway uh, let me go back what happened we had some initial goals uh, to reach we saw that we cannot exactly reach to that amount because we passed the budget and cost sorry we passed the area and the cost. So we try to minimize the deviation. We have seen that it doesn't make sense to minimize something, uh, summation of some things that have different units. So instead of uh, just uh, minimizing the pure deviation, we uh, try to minimize the percentage of deviation. So percentage is same, There's, is the dimensionless. So it's the reason we have such a goal right now. Yeah, I hope you get the big picture. Okay, now we reach to this goal. Okay, but some of you might give me uh, a hard time right now saying that maybe for you, deviation from cost is not very important because maybe you can get some loans so you're less picky on the uh, less picky on the cost, but you're very picky on the area because your land is limited. Or maybe um, you expect that your uh, convention center is in the like, uh, I mean, the customer for your convention center are mostly from people who don't want to spend too much. Maybe is you is okay. You don't reach uh, the fifteen or the number of large rooms because you don't expect that you have that much of uh, customers. But you expect you have more customer on maybe five or ten uh, numbers. So maybe you want to get more importance to area because your land is limited, or maybe uh, more importance to number of small rooms because you think that target is more uh, reasonable to reach, and you're maybe less picky on the cost because you have a good credit and uh, you, you can get a good loan with a low percentage. So for you, uh, deviation from uh, percentage of deviation from initial goal, maybe it's not too important for some of them, but very important to some of them. For this purpose, you need to talk with the field experts. They have a background knowledge and maybe they give you some weight in terms of importance. So as you see, I have a weight for underbuilt, overbuilt of a small, medium and large rooms and also for the cost, over cost, under cost, and also for the area. It just means maybe all of the weights are one. If all of the weights are one, it just means uh, the percentage deviation from each goal is same for you. You don't care. I mean, but if you let's say if I here maybe for uh, let's say for weight of overbuilt, I make one. Maybe for large on overbuilt of large, I put the weight of zero. It means I don't care at all if I make overbuilt, and maybe for area. Over area, if it, I, if my land is totally limited, maybe I put a very large coefficient, ten like one million or ten million. When I put such coefficient, 
of weight. So instead of saying unlimited weight, is not it's, it's impossible to put something like that. You should put a numerical value. When I weight put a weight of 10 million, it just means the overbit would be zero at the end because my function is limitation. So using linear programming and simple method, so that method is kind of smart. So if you put a very large coefficient here, that value would end up to be zero. So I hope you get the big picture here. So the big picture is some percentage deviations is, uh, has different importance. For you, some, you might put the weight of zero. It just means you don't care at all, like here. Some of them you put one, or for some of them you put a very large coefficient. Since it's minimization, it just means you don't, uh, that uh, constant is very important for you. You don't want to have, uh, you want to have zero deviation from uh, overbuilt of a square feet. So, uh, uh, because you, you, you don't have more land, you can just, you cannot make uh, like imaginary land. So you put a very large coefficient to get rid of that uh, deviation. Any questions so far? Let me wait one, one minute in case if there's any question. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm, I mean, we are in the COVID area. Usually in my classes, people, we have some games and people are much more interactive also. I can't see your computer if it was a physical class, so I could just fix it. Hopefully from next semester, uh, your learning have much more fun. And in case you face issues, you could easily fix it. So uh, we, all, we already know that there is some limitation for your uh, uh, proper learning. We try to minimize those issues, but uh, at the end, if you feel you have questions and you're confused and uh, you have questions, you can just reach me through email, group me, or just maybe you can make a meeting with me. We can talk over uh, your issues. It's really, I had really good office hours this semester. Uh, since so many of you reached me, that's really uh, a good approach from many of you. Okay, so let's open the Excel files of group programming. Okay, so first of all, one decision variable type is just for number of rooms, these blue, first blue ones uh, on the top left. So how many small rooms, medium and large rooms you might have. And also you have some overbuilt and underbuilt value, uh, variables uh, for different constraints. I think if you do it in lingo, it's much easier. So you, I also give you the last assignment, which just do whatever I said today in lingo. So if you do this uh, problem in lingo, it's probably is much easier than uh, Excel. But uh, because in Excel, we have less flexibility in some aspects. Anyway, so let me look at the first yellow cell. It's the constraints of... Uh, small rooms. So look, the first one is uh, some products of uh, number of rooms. The for the first constraint, the coefficient of medium and large room are zero because I don't have them in that constraint. There's just one, uh, one for, for the coefficient of small rooms times uh, this blue row in the row four. Uh, since M and L has a coefficient of zero. You just take care of S, number of S, small rooms, plus the uh, underbuilt and overbuilt values. 
So this yellow cell just means how many small rooms and how many, uh, also your deviation from uh, number of small rooms, either overbuilt or underbuilt. The goal is five. Same for uh, medium rooms. If I click on it, as you see, now coefficient of M is one, number of rooms, uh, plus minus deviation. Also large rooms, area, square feet, and also budget. We also talk about uh, weight of the um, decision variables or weight, sorry, the weight of deviation. So as you see, if I just put some random weights. In your final exam, I might give you the exact weight so you don't have any randomness in terms of weight. But look, for the cost, I put coefficient of 10. It means for me, deviating from the cost is really important. I, I am not deviated. I have some coefficient for area. It, it seems I could have some more area or less areas. A large number of rooms and also maybe overbuilt of uh, small rooms is zero. I don't care. So for also large room, uh, overbuilt of large room and mediums of zero two. So anyway, these are some random coefficients in terms of uh, what importance I want to give to my different deviation that I have. So this row, which is sample weight, let me just color them in green, is just some random that I put for this problem. All of them could be one, some of them could be zero or, or so for your uh, final exam, in case I, uh, I don't give you any weight, you can just put all of them as the one. So you don't have to have uh, like, you are not necessarily have to have any weight, but it's a fair idea to just give them same importance. What is my objective function? Look, I, I just said, uh, if you look at the formula, for example, the first part, I just said uh, uh, D minus S, D S divided by goal, which is five, because I want to look at deviation, proportion of deviation or percentage of deviation times weight. So weight here is one. Let's look at the last one, which is O, which is uh, O um, 15. So, sorry, O 14, so my bad. So I'm highlighting that one. It just means, first of all, uh, uh, cost plus, so this C stands for cost. So over cost divided by coefficient of cost or the goal of the cost, sorry, 1 million. So it just means uh, what is the proportion of my over cost times the coefficient, which is 10, because based on talking with the, uh, somebody expert in the field, they want to have a lot, they want to give a lot of importance in the cost. Maybe they have some budget issue or they have a very bad credit, they cannot get any loan. I wait one or two minutes for you to look at the problem and the like constraints and coefficients here, just in case you have any questions. I think I got one of your friends' question. I think uh, Rose had a question about uh, my logic for D minus S and D plus S. So let me explain here. Hopefully I got her question. So let's say at the end, 
whatever uh, would be my final question, uh, answer, I don't know. Maybe S would be three. So, If S3 means I, I, I built three uh, small rooms, so how much underbuilt I had? Rose, it was, I think it was your questions. Let's say my final answer would be S equal three, right? So what would be as a D, D minus S? How, how many rooms I had as underbuilt? If you're, how many Let's rooms, three? So I, at the end, my solution, my Excel would tell uh, I should make three rooms. Okay, so you're, I mean, I guess if it's interchangeable, your underbuild would be two and your overbuild would be zero. Yes. So look at the formula in the first cell. F7 minus G, uh, G7, D minus S minus uh, D, uh, D plus S. Okay, so two would go in the D minus S and zero would go in the D plus S? Yes. So it's the reason, he, I, th uh, I really think what could be your question about here. So you might ask why we said D minus S minus D plus S because it's, it's, it's just the way that I set it up. So let's okay. say, let's say uh, I just go over your question again, it might be your friend's question, but again, instead of D minus D plus S, we can put A and B just uh, if it's less confusing for you. Let's say, uh, let me just pick that one and take it over there, so. It was the initial formula. So let's say my final answer for S would be seven. So what would be my underbuilt? How many I built as a, uh, under five? What would be my D minus S? Your D minus S, your underbuild would be zero. Your yes. overbuild would be two. So I still look here for both situation, uh, it, it, the right uh, is equal five. So three plus two minus zero, seven plus zero minus two. So in both situation, I follow my constraint. I hope I answered your question, how, why I set it up in that way. Yeah, but, no, you definitely did. Okay, good, good. Is there any question from um, other students here? Oh, let me just put it back, it might be. Okay, it might be either very easy or too difficult when there's no question. Hopefully it's the first uh, case. So let's just press S. So as you see, uh, now I'm, my objective function is minimizing F16 here. What is my F16? It's just a summation of deviation divided by initial goal. So I, I already explained that. Hopefully you just go one by one and check it. Now I look at my constraints. First of all, uh, C4 to E4, which is like uh, first blue cells, there are number of rooms, I said equal integer. On top of that, yellow cells, P7 to P11 equal to uh, Q7 to Q11. This formula, look at the first one that I just explained, S plus D minus S minus D plus S should be equal five. Uh, 
And also I said uh, all of them should be non-negative, which makes sense. And we use this uh, simplex algorithm. If I plus solve, as you see, for such a problem, which when we have integer values, we don't have sensitive analysis. We just have the final answer. So if there is a, such a questions uh, that you have integer values, uh, the only difficult part is just how you want to set it up. But you don't have to have the headache of sensitive analysis talking about shadow price or like uh, slack, surplus, those kind of things. Press OK. Look, so five small rooms, 10 medium rooms, and 13 large rooms. And deviation from ultimate goal is not zero, it's 0 0.02776. So we, we, we couldn't reach zero deviation, but we try to minimize it. So deviation is not one or two, it's just 0 0.276. Any questions so far? Okay, so if there's no question, please open the Word file that I posted. Um, not this one. Let me see, where is that? Oh. Is max flow problem. Okay, let me read the problem. The graph represents various flows that can occur through a switched uh, treatment plan with the numbers of the arcs representing the maximum flow in terms of a switch per hour that can be accommodated. Formulate the, an LP model to determine the maximum tons of switch per hour that can be proce processed by this plant. So we have some uh, like pipelines with a uh, limitation in terms of uh, switch per hour, but we try to maximize total flow. Actually, uh, for some uh, linear programming or prescriptive antics like this, some conventional method might be very difficult. How you want to formulate it, like uh, maximizing all the flows and, you know, uh, let's say sometimes uh, your inflow is much more than outflow and how you make those connections. Uh, so in such a cases, uh, you could be innovative. So prescriptive antics has some interesting aspects. So there is no reading and sometimes you, can, you, ha you don't have to follow traditional method. It could be innovative in terms of introducing a new uh, constraints or just playing with the problem to make it much more easier. First of all, the constraints for each node or connections here, we know that inflow should be equal outflow. So let's look at the point six. The maximum inflow is 16. Outflow, the maximum is 11. You cannot have inflow of 16, nine plus seven is 16, and outflow of 11. They don't, your inflow is 16, outflow is 11. So you don't lose some of the flows. They don't evaporate or magically disappear. So if your outflow maximum is 11, Maybe you get nine from the larger pipe and maybe two from the smaller pipe. So at the end, the summation of the inflow should be 11. So you might have a distribution of 11, maybe 5.5 on each. Uh, but at the end, uh, total inflow and outflow should be exactly the same. And same for other points. 
So it's a lot of headache, but let's look at the one innovative way of doing that. So we make an imaginary line from point seven to point one because uh, initial point is one, the uh, ultimate point is seven. Instead of maximizing everything from one to seven, we, we maximize everything from seven to one. So if you maximize, uh, maximize that uh, uh, red link, ultimate, uh, uh, automatically you maximize all the flow from one to seven. So maximizing the flow from seven to one is just synonym by maximizing the flow from one to seven. But in this case, you have a much easier problem to approach. I give you one minute or one couple of minutes to think about it. So in case you have questions, then I go to the uh, solution. By the way, uh, you are not active in group me. I, I expect you ask some questions and help each other, but nobody ask any question over group me. So uh, please just start look at the, your fi uh, previous final exam. That's a difficult exam if you haven't seen the problems. Even for the last semester, I gave them the two years. Uh, I mean, like in 2019, I uh, sorry, in, in 220 semester, I gave the last final exam of 219. Uh, so. I, and they had a lot of questions, but I haven't seen any questions from you yet. Anyway, so let's look at the solution of uh, the solution. So again, I to be to have an easier problem, I add the imaginary line uh, uh, pipeline from seven to five, one, because maximizing one to seven is exactly equal maximizing uh, seven to one. Okay, open the Excel file. So it looks like the previous transportation problems, although we have uh, water here. So first of all, uh, for each node, one to seven, you have some coefficient of minus and uh, plus. Minus just means outflow, plus, plus one means inflow. For example, uh, look at uh, point one, let me just change the color to red. Some of the coefficient zeros, it just means I don't have any inflow outflows. But look uh, to my this first three minus. If you look at the definition, it just said one to two, one to three, one to four. One to two, one to three, one to four. Outflows, so the coefficients are one. I have also the maximum capacity of them here, eight, nine, seven. But the blue cells here are empty right now because th this is my decision variable. I'm not sure how much flow I would send on each link, in each link. So it's the reason I, the color is one. So also look at the yellow cell here. I'm just saying uh, whatever you make, whatever decision that you make here, multiple to the coefficient because they're either inflow or outflow should be equal zero. The constraints for all of the nodes are zero. It just refers to this fact that whatever comes in would go out. Inflow equal outflow should be zero. So if you click on the yellow cell, as you see, 
it's just multiplication of these coefficients times to their uh, decision variable that I'm not sure what is yet. At the end, summation of inflow outflow should be zero. Regarding the capacity column, maximum capacity column, the capacity from seven to one, my imaginary new line is 9999. So can anyone guess why I put 999? Why I didn't put like 10 or 500 or one other numbers? Probably any guess could be true. So first of all, this is the imaginary line. I want to maximize the flow in that line. So I shouldn't put any like constraints for any phys feasible constraint for that link because I don't want to have any extra limitation or constraint. So, and I couldn't put like infinite here or there is some uh, mathematical sign for infinite. So instead of that, I just put a large number because either I use Lingo or Excel, I should put numerical values. I cannot put a non-numeric value. I cannot put a Greek word for unlimited number or large number. So I just put an arbitrary large number there because at the end, I want to work with Excel and Lingo. I cannot put anything else. So. 900, maybe for you 100 or 10,000 means infinite. So it depends on the type of problem. So you should have a good guess what could be an infinite number in there. So what could be a synonym with the infinite number in that cell? So decision variable is maximizing uh, the link the uh, red link here from seven to one. So let me just change the color to green. So this green cell seven to one is here anyway, because I also needed to consider in the constraint because for the 0.7 and 0.1, uh, the, the 4.7 is the outflow for 0.1 is inflow. So I need to take care of them here too. So it's the reason I put here because it also works for in two of the constraints. Anyway, let's look at the solver. Okay, look at my objective function, D17. D17 here, D17, the green cell. So I want to maximize it. Also, I have a constraint, D5 to D17. D5 to D7. This is like this blue and green uh, cells. Less than maximum flow, which is, you should be. You cannot send some flow more than what they can tolerate. So first concept just means we are limited to the capacity of those links. Look at the last constraint, G18 to M18. These white zeros equal so these uh, yellow zeros equal G19 to M19, these white zeros. It just means inflow and outflow should be exactly the same. Let me hit solve. Here you can have, uh, you have some, um, uh, you are also sensitive to analysis things because, uh, Okay, where is my solution? We have also sensitivity report. You, you, you already talked about shadow price, slack, and surplus. So since uh, the uh, stream, the sewage stream could, could, shouldn't have, doesn't need to be integer. So we, we don't have that limitation. So Therefore, you, you don't have to, uh, you, you have some sensitive analysis because for integer number, we don't have that analysis in the simplex method. Any questions?
Okay, I think let's just hit the second, the next problem. Uh, so this is like a simple transportation problem. You have some supply point on the left side and some demand points on the right side. Look, uh, you have some minus, minus 100 minus 100 here, plus 75 plus 18. If you look, so minus, first of all, minus something just means uh, they are supply point, they are sending something out. So we have minus and we have plus. Look over demand. So plus 75 plus 18, my demand is 155. So demand, oh, let me see what happened. Okay, I think my Word document has an issue. So, so let me see why. Let me just close and open it again. Okay, supply equal 100 plus 100 equal 200. Demand equal 80 plus 75 equal 155. First of all, I have more supply than demand. Uh, usually what you do, you try to have, uh, you provide those demands. So you want to have at least 80 and at least 75 on your demand point, which is three and four. So one fact, another fact, let's look at maximum delivery on point on Demand point of three. What is the maximum delivery on that point? Can anyone tell me? Let's everything is fine. How much goods I can deliver on point three? Considering the fact that cost of each unit from one to three and two to three are five dollars and four dollars. And upper bound, which is the maximum capacity of those links, are 40 and 30. So if I so the maximum delivery is just how much I can send at max to 0.3. At max, I can send 40 units. So how much what is the maximum delivery from? Point two to point three. The upper bound or the maximum uh, capacity is 30. So maximum delivery would be 40 plus 30 is 70. I cannot uh, satisfy the demand. What about maximum delivery on demand point of four? Can anyone tell me? Seventy. Seventy. Yes, right. Thirty-five plus thirty-five, seventy. So seventy is less than seventy-five here on point three, and less than eighty. So it seems I cannot satisfy this demand. I cannot satisfy the demand, but. I should do my best in terms of sending maximum supply to those points. 
I'm pretty sure that I cannot satisfy the demand because I have limited uh, link capacity. But how can I just send most possible to that point? At least I try to reach that goal. Maybe I couldn't. So I go to the solution here. Let's just do in the conventional way. In the conventional way, we want to minimize the cost. So the objective function just cost of the each link, $5, $6, 4 and 3 these red ones, times how much we send in that links through those links. You also have some constraints. For example, for point one, we don't want to pass 100 cap. Same for point two. For point three, uh, we want at least send 75. And for point eight, we want to send at least 80. So let's just do conventional way, which you try to minimize the cost and satisfy the demand. So if I hit solver, uh, first of all, my objective function is G15. It just means amount of decision variables, which my number of products times the, the uh, unit cost. Uh, decision variables, this year, uh, blue cells, F7 to F10. And I have some constraints. First of all, the first constraint F7 to F10 should be less than H7 to H10, which is my capacity cap. Also, for each node, I set at J19 to M19 less greater than J12 to M12. If I do have this constraint, first of all, for uh, supply point, these are negative. So when I said a yellow cell is more than them, it means they should be minus 19, minus 18. So minus 18 and 19 is larger than uh, minus 100. If I have that, I follow my um, uh, capacity cap, and I don't send more than that. So it's the reason I put minus here. The only reason I want to have an easier way of formulating them, so there's no mathematics. You, you, maybe you can formulate in a way that you just put positive uh, uh, numbers there. For just ease of use, I put negative. So for second two, for the next yellow cells, if you said uh, like uh, G, uh, il, row 11 more than low, row 12. It just means you try to send more than 75, more than 80 to, to at least support your demand. Anyway, let's hit solve. It couldn't solve it. So you get an error. Solver could not find a feasible solution. Yes, you cannot find this feasible solution. The only way, because you cannot satisfy you cannot send more than 75 or more than 80. Uh, where is that? We cancel. It's impossible to send that. Uh, so it's the reason when you do a conventional way of solving this problem, you get an error. Any questions so far? I think we almost ran out of time. So just the big picture was we had some supply point and demand point is similar to previous problems. But if you do, we do in a conventional way of satisfying the, having some constraint for satisfying our supply or demand, we cannot have a solution. It's impossible for you to send 75 and 80 units to 2.3 and 4. We, we did it in two way, one way of uh, just doing simple calculations here. We have seen that maximum de delivery is 70 in each point. The demand is 75 and 80. So you cannot have a constraint saying that you want to at least have 75 and 80 on the demand points is mathematically impossible. So it's the reason when I try to solve through solver, it gave me an error. So in the next class, uh, if you, which I don't think we have enough presentation for next Monday, so most likely we have a teaching. So I teach you the remaining of it, how to solve this problem, and probably one more 
one or two more problems. If I see uh, enough presentation for next Monday, I just post the solution for this problem, how we can solve this problem. And however, for your next assignment, is solving the Martel Beach hotel expansion in lingo, if it's possible. So th that's a uh, uh, optional problem. So if you have issue in uh, you running lingo over Mac, just use a piece of paper and write, write the constraints. So I don't expect to see the final solution from you guys. In just piece of paper, try to formulate it in the way that we formulate in the lingo. If you find a way to solve it in lingo, if you have Mac, just send me the LG4 format. So when you solve it, uh, formulate it in the lingo software, the extension that you should save is LG4. Dot LG4. And upload the, your answer. If you have issue in the using the Mac, just use a piece of paper, write the equation on the piece of paper and send it to me. Because in the lingo, um, you, you might remember, let me just open one of the lingo uh, problems that he had, let's say Clark alumni. Look, the way that I solve is sim similar to how human writing the piece of paper, right? Look, plus my, it's not like Excel. So last problems, if you have lingo, do it in the lingo. If you don't have lingo, just use a piece of paper, write these equations and send it to me. Okay, that's for today. Any questions? Yeah, Professor, I had a question sure. and uh, I just posted it on the chat. Oh, if you can see that, thanks. Yeah, so that is it correct that in the sensitive repo for non binding constraint, the allowable link is and I think is it is that you know keeps the final uh, value unchanged. But for the binding constraint, the allowable link is and it is the point the range which the keeps shady price of coins. Oh, I think you have a mistake. So uh, your friend's uh, questions he sent me uh, in the private is about uh, shadow price and sensitive analysis. So, okay, so please look at, I think it was week either 10 or 11. Yes, look at week uh, 10, uh, class materials and more concepts here. We run out of time for today. I think your friends are leaving. So if you still have the question, uh, please email me and I answer it to you. Okay, thanks. That's perfect. Sure, thank you. Sorry, I mean, we almost like two or three minutes after out of our time. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you guys. So- Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Okay, just try to do your final previous final exam. I expect I want you guys have a really good grade in this course. Thank you. Thank you, Professor.